Today we're going to begin the study of damped harmonic oscillators. This is something you might expect to encounter in your dynamics class, but it turns out the math is the same as in our circuit analysis class. So here are a couple of examples of harmonic oscillators. And this one is designed to vibrate at 128 hertz. Uh, it has a C written on it. I think it's because it's close to the C below middle C, but that should be closer to 130 hertz, so don't use this one to tune your piano. Now I can hear this, but my phone doesn't record frequencies below 100 hertz very well, so let me use the smaller one, see if I can pick up the sound as it vibrates. Uh, this one says 512 hertz. I don't know if that's going to pick up very much or not. They're, they're, uh, they're pretty quiet. In these physical objects, there may be a lot of other frequencies, but the dominant frequency, the one that's easiest to hear, can be most simply described by a sine wave. And if you describe motion with just a sine wave, that would be what we call simple harmonic motion. Here's a type of oscillator you're probably familiar with from physics class. This is a case where it's fairly easy to derive an equation of motion that gives the displacement from some midpoint as a function of time. In this case, the amplitude and period of the sinusoidal motion depend on the physical characteristics of the setup, like the mass and the spring constant. The motion of a pendulum, at least with small oscillations, is a good example of a harmonic oscillator, and it's certainly much easier to see the motion. This one is also good because I can easily demonstrate damping of the motion. Here I've added a sail to the pendulum, so air resistance will decrease the amplitude. Qualitatively, the motion looks like a sine wave with an exponentially decaying amplitude. An exponential function will take infinitely long to get to zero, but in this case, the static friction where the yardstick is attached soon gets to be greater than the gravitational force making the pendulum move, so it comes to a complete stop. This decaying sinusoidal motion is an example of what is called an underdamped harmonic oscillator. For an overdamped oscillator, imagine I try to do this demonstration underwater. In that case, the damping force is so great that the motion ends up being just an exponential decay with no oscillations. This next example is more closely related to our class. This circuit has an inductor, a capacitor, and a resistor. And when I send a square wave into the circuit, it causes the voltage and current in the circuit to oscillate. Okay, right now, I have an oscilloscope looking at the voltage across the capacitor, and you can see that this function looks like a decaying sine wave, so it's an underdamped harmonic oscillator. In this case, the resistor provides the damping force, so if I changed it, I could end up with that overdamped case with just an exponential decay. If you tune the resistor to whatever value is the midpoint between the underdamped and the overdamped cases, you'd get what is called a critically damped oscillator. There are situations where you might want all three of these cases. Sometimes you might want to get rid of circuit oscillations, and sometimes you might want to emphasize them. And sometimes you might want to design your system for the critically damped case. Here's a case where you want critical damping. If you have under damping on your shock, you'll be bouncing along the road. If you have over damping, you'll get a really rough ride. <laughs> 